Fredo, what's the agenda for Africa now? We've told a long story. Um, we're in the modern world. We're looking ahead. Um, what's the agenda of the Illuminati Chittahuli for Africa? And the world will come to that, do you think? It appears uh, from what I see happening all over Africa that the Chittahuli are depopulating or destroying those countries in Africa which, left to themselves, could become the bread baskets of this continent. The Sudan is being destroyed. Angola has been obliterated. Mozambique has been destroyed. But wait, the countries as such have not been destroyed. Only their populations have been obliterated or brought to the edge of extermination. Why? What do these creatures want? I feel that the answer said they want to alter human society by wiping out certain races of humankind and leaving others alive. I think that Africa is being depopulated deliberately in order to enable the future dictators of this world to get at Africa's minerals without bothering to, to pay anyone for those minerals. In other words, the minerals of various countries, things which appear more important to the Chitauli than human lives, are being cleared so that they can be, continents are being cleared, countries are being cleared of people, so that people, whoever will be in power afterwards, will be able to have access to Africa's huge oil, coal, uranium, gold, and diamond deposits without having to pay any African ruler for that, those minerals. In other words, we are reaching a point where the minerals that come out of the ground will become the property not of small nations like Africa and the many nations that are inside there, but of the huge global government which is on the cards and which is being built now. And is that why so much violence, um, both individual violence on the streets and between tribes, between groups, and between countries is going on? Yes, sir. People, it seems to me that it is the, the decision of the Chitaul to accelerate the destruction of as many human lives as possible. At the same time, to leave the minerals as well as other natural resources intact for the future rulers of the world to consume. I view, sir, with great unease a phenomenon which has been gaining ground in Africa in recent years. There has been planned and actually built in several parts of Africa things which are called peace parks huge game reserves which border on certain countries. For example, the Kruger National Park in the Eastern Transvaal borders on Mozambique. And now I understand that the Kruger National Park is to be duplicated this time in Mozambique, which is very interesting in Deeps, in that where the new duplicate park is going to be established. It is one of the areas where, especially during the Rhodesian War, some of the heaviest, deadliest fighting and massive dispersion of tribes people actually took place. 
And there are a lot of game parks uh, down the uh, Rwandan border and other countries like that where um, people came in to cause the problems there and the, the genocide. Yes, sir. It's very strange. Somebody, I think, I don't know who, and quite frankly, I don't want to know. Because it's no use talking about an enemy you cannot throw a weapon at. I don't know who is planning this thing, but these game parks are being established at a huge price, a huge cost in human lives. These game parks are being established at the expense of the nations in whose countries the parks are. Why? Not only that, while Africans allow themselves to be manipulated by these enemies of humankind, while Africans fly at each other's throats like enraged hawks, they are specially trained men and women who are being infiltrated into the warring African countries and who continue mining Africa's minerals as if there was no war taking place. And these minerals are being taken out of these countries in huge convoys of heavy vehicles. I've seen this several times. While the war in Southwest Africa, Namibia, was being fought, there was a huge smuggling of minerals, such as diamonds and so on. The same is happening in Angola. The same is happening elsewhere. The, um, the name that comes up, um, of course, in terms of so many environmental parks or game parks uh, that are United Nations agencies which speak for themselves. But there's also um, uh, so-called environmental groups like the Worldwide Fund for Nature. Uh, what's your feeling about the way the environmental movement um, is being operated? The Worldwide Fund for Nature, of course, is headed by Prince Philip, of whom I would certainly not buy a used car or from whom. And Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, his friend, two of the bloodlines. Since that fund was established. African animals are being exterminated at an even greater rate, believe me. In the Eastern Transvaal, some farmers have broken down fences between their farms and have made their game, their private uh, game parks into one huge thing. But when you go into these game parks and you get off the vehicle and you walk a short distance by foot, you notice a very disturbing thing. One, you see no recent animal tracks anywhere around you. Two, you cannot smell animals and yet if a game park is filled with animals anywhere in Africa, you can actually smell the animals. You can smell the giraffe, the buffalo. You can smell the large antelopes. Each one has its particular smell. But if you go to those places in the Eastern Transvaal, you don't smell animals, let alone see them. There is shooting of wild game in those supposedly protected places like there is no tomorrow. And furthermore, in some of these private game reserves, you see something that fills you with disquiet. You see airstrips carrying not, not small aeroplanes as one would expect, not small one engine aeroplane. But I have seen game reserves where there is an airstrip and a hangar which carries a large aircraft at a quarter of the 1950s. 
What is a gamekeeper doing with a heavy aircraft like that? What do you think the agenda of the World Wide Fund for Nature is? I think, sir, it's an exercise in cynicism, an exercise in utter hypocrisy. And it doesn't surprise me that the leader of this fraud is a man whose eyes are like those of a reptile, a man whose lips look as if they were sculptured with a cutthroat razor. What is the answer, Credo? What, what do people need to do to stop this agenda becoming reality and to turn it round and create the kind of world we want to live in? Say, I do not have any ready-made answers to your question, but I will tell you this. Our first duty is to make the whole world, the whole of humanity, aware of the threat facing it. Such is the blind spot in our brains that when people threaten us publicly that they are going to exterminate us and our entire nation, we don't take them seriously. Sir. For example, this threat to Africa is visible to everyone with a little thought, but it is so monstrous so huge and so fearsome that our conditioned minds refuse to accept this. Now, in England, sir, there is a deadly looking animal which I once saw. That animal is really a little wizard or a witch. It is a sleek animal whose body is very flexible the English people call it a a stoat. Stoat. Yeah, mm -hmm. a stoat. Now, when that animal chases a rabbit and corners it, the rabbit stops and freezes, and it it looks at a, the stoat with totally hypnotized eyes. It is as if this animal is refusing to see the stoat, and the stoat catches it and eats it. We are reacting exactly like that. This is the way the, the Illuminati want us to react, to be hypnotized by their supposed power, to become blind to their, to their existence exactly as a cornered rabbit refuses to see a stoat, it doesn't want to see it because it cannot handle what is standing before it. We are like that. And we must stop this stoaty mentality. We must understand that there will come a time when the damage will have become so great, will have gone so far that we will not be able to reverse it. But I believe in this power set of the great African proverb that goes, Mudimu Upala Baloi. God is greater than all the wizards and sorcerers on this earth. And I know that if as many people as possible are aware of what the Chitauli are doing, the Chitauli will be forced to retreat. Already there are signs that they are getting desperate. Why? Because the human being is trying to bring out the God within itself. We are trying to become gods, and we are succeeding. It's only a few decades ago when there was no one on this earth who knew or cared anything about animal conservation, 
who knew or cared anything about the protection of the environment. But today, sir, there are thousands of such people worldwide. It is a hopeful sign, a sign that should be encouraged. Let the power of light shine in the dark corners of conspiracy. And as it shines, let humankind be saved. Fredo Mutwa, the most remarkable man, it's been my privilege to meet. And when you look at Fredo Mutwa, you're looking at an unbelievable example of the true power of the human spirit. His life has been a series of astonishing challenges from the moment he was born, right to today as threats on his life continue, threats to his wife's life continue, and these challenges would have broken the spirit. Just a few of them would have broken the spirit of most other people on this planet, but they've not broken him. Here he is talking to you, revealing information that has largely never been revealed before through these sources, because the pressure on him must be to keep quiet, keep the secrets. But as Credo said, Africa is dying. As a place of freedom, the earth is dying. It's time for people to know. Now this man has got the guts to stand up and speak out, despite condemnation from virtually all sides. So what are we going to do? Are we going to say, oh, that's interesting. Well, yeah, Credo Mutwe is interesting, you know. Light a candle or dismiss it. Oh, he's just a witch doctor. He's got nothing to say. In other words, are we going to find some excuse now to do nothing? To sit on our backsides and think someone else will do it or there's nothing we can do? Or are we going to express the spirit that this guy is expressing? Because if we do, this whole house of cards of global control is going to fall. It's going to be brought down by the wind of change that we will create. Or if we walk away and think there's nothing we can do, we just powerless people, what can we do? Oh, my God. Or dismiss what he says or whatever. Then that house of cards is going to solidify because we're holding it together still. And we're going to live in a global fascist state. Not some distant time in the future. Oh, my goodness me, it's going to be terrible for the kids. Now, in our lifetimes. Are we going to go on fighting each other? Are we going to go on being divided and ruled because someone else has got a different religion to us. Oh my goodness, call the police. Someone's got a different color to us. Someone's got a different creed to us. Someone's got a different spin on life than us. Are we going to go on doing that? Because if we are, we deserve to be in a global fascist state. Because we are acting in our own lives as individual fascists against those around us that don't share our view. We can unite on what we I hope, believe in, freedom. We can celebrate the diversity of human expression, of human ability, of the human sense of reality, the way we see the same thing in so many different ways. We can celebrate the diversity of race, the diversity of all things in this glorious web of life we call creation. And if we do that, we will not agree. Fair enough, what a boring state anyway. But we will have harmony. And therefore we will have peace via respect for each other. And the Illuminati, the Chittahuli, whatever name you want to give them, can't stand harmony. Because harmony is a nightmare to manipulate. Disharmony and conflict is a piece of cake. Are we going on playing the game? according to the rules of the Illuminati, fighting each other, cussing each other, blaming each other? Or are we going to decide that we're going to play games with different rules? Games that have unwritten laws called love, called respect, called harmony, called peace. We have got ourselves into this state, and that's the truth. 
and that's good news we have got ourselves in this state by making decisions to give our minds away and insist that everyone else does the same we can therefore make choices that will bring this manipulation to an end almost like that by taking our power back to think for ourselves and giving everyone else the honor to do the same are we going to choose love in its true sense or are we going to choose fear the choice is ours it always has been and the consequences for one or the other in terms of our future are immensely immensely difficult Freda Mutwa has shown the kind of spirit necessary to bring an end to this nonsense. If the rest of humanity shows a fraction of that, we have got nothing to concern ourselves with because this world is going to change from a prison to a paradise. It's just a choice. I know which one I'm going to make. How about you? Hope you've got something out of it. Thanks for watching.